Good morning everyone, it's Mr Cunningham here. Um, I am going to speak to you a wee bit about sleeping, which I know might sound a bit of a strange one for me to speak about. However, I have been speaking to a number of parents recently and carers who have been telling me that some of our primary ones, the sevens, um, are not sleeping as well as they used to, are not going to bed when they used to. Um, and actually, I have been speaking to the Parent Council and someone there asked me, could I put together a wee presentation on why sleep is so important? So this presentation is just about understanding why we sleep and why it is important that we get the number of hours that we should get for our bodies and our minds. Now, what is very exciting is we've just heard that our primary fours to sevens are coming back to school. Primary one to three have been in already for a week and a half. We are seeing lots of sleepy primary ones to threes who are going home exhausted at the end of the day, ready for their dinner and then going to bed. Now, if you are at home and you're fours to sevens, these are questions that I want you to think about and maybe have a chat with someone around in your living room or your kitchen about these questions. But if you're in primary one to three, your teacher might ask you these questions now. So why do we need sleep? What happens when we sleep? How much sleep do we need? And what happens if we do not get enough sleep? Now, if you are in one of the primary one to three classes, the teacher might stop the video now to have a wee chat about these questions with you. If you're at home, Think about them yourself as well, think about them in your head, and we'll see what the answers are in just a moment. So the first question was, why do we need sleep? We are on the go all day long, and our bodies go through a lot, including PE in the gym, in the playground, when we play or participate in sports. We can even be mentally exhausted from working hard at school or at home doing the home learning. We might get tired practicing instruments or anything else that requires concentration. And just like cars need fuel, our bodies need sleep to recharge our energy sources. Sleeping well at night helps your body get ready for another day. Scientists still do not know what happens in our brains while we sleep but they do know that we need to retain and organise information and that muscles and tissues are repaired. So we need sleep to recharge. So what happens when we sleep? Now, this isn't something that we give much thought to, but we don't just get into bed and sleep. When we sleep, our bodies go through a pattern known as the sleep cycle. The sleep cycle consists of five stages, which can take about 90 minutes to 110 minutes to complete. And the cycle repeats itself many times throughout the night. So stage one is light sleep. Stage two, we relax. Stage three is a deep sleep. Four is a deep sleep with slow brain waves. And five is REM sleep. Let's find out more about them. So the first stage is quite a light sleep, sometimes called Solomon's or drowsy sleep. During this time, our eyes and our muscles are still active, but much slower than when we are awake. Our heart rate and breathing also slows down but we can be aware of noises around us and can be easily woken from this stage. Dreaming is very rare, but sometimes our muscles will contract and we get that feeling of falling. During stage two, our bodies prepare for a deep sleep. Our eyes stop moving, our body temperature gets lower, and our brain waves and our heart rate slow down further. In other words, we completely relax. We become unaware of signs around us and our brain starts to process information that we have gathered throughout the day. This tends to be the longest part of our cycle. 
making up for 45% of our total sleep time. In stage three of our sleep patterns, our brain activity changes yet again. Our slow brain waves, which are called delta waves, are interrupted with little bursts of faster waves. This is us in a deep sleep. However, this is also the stage where people can talk in their sleep or even sleepwalk. This is rare, but will usually happen when our cycle moves from non-REM to REM sleep. In stage four, which is the fourth stage, is the final non-REM stage of our cycle. We are now in a deep sleep with our brain waves mostly staying slow. Remember, these are called delta waves. At this point, our heart rate and our body temperature are at their lowest points. If you are woken up during this stage, you can feel a little confused for a couple of minutes. Stage five. Finally, we enter rapid eye movement, REM sleep. Our brain waves change yet again. During REM sleep, our brain waves look the same as when we are awake, as is our temperature, our heart rate and breathing rate which all rise during REM. Our eyes move very quickly from side to side, but stay closed. This is when most of us have our dreams. And as you get older, we spend less time in this stage. So for example, babies may spend 80% of their total sleep in REM, whereas an adult only spends 25%. After all of this, we go back to stage one and start again. And it is common to wake up between cycles and sometimes we aren't even aware of it. So how much sleep do we need? How much sleep do you need? The amount of sleep changes depending on what age you are. And it is thought that if you're a baby between zero and three months, you need 14 to 17 hours of sleep a day. Now remember, each day has 24 hours. If you are just an infant and you are between four and 11 months, you need 12 to 15 hours. If you're a toddler, you need one, oh sorry, I beg your pardon. If you're a toddler between one and two, you will need 11 to 14 hours. If you're in nursery, or if you've got brothers or sisters who are in nursery, they need 10 to 13 hours of sleep. Now, in our school, we have school age children between 6 and 13, and we need to have between 9 and 11 hours sleep every night. If you've got older brothers and sisters, especially between 14 and 17, they need between 8 and 10 hours of sleep. Now, in our school, we are between the 6 and 13 years. Have a think about what time your bedtime is and what time you wake up. If that number is between 9 and 11 hours, then that's how much sleep you need and you're getting it correct. Now, if you are in one of our younger classes in school, Maybe the teacher can have a wee chat to you about trying to work out what time bedtime is, what time you get up and how much sleep you have a night and actually ask the big question, are you getting enough? Now this is question four from the very first slide. The question was what happens if we do not get enough sleep? Now this slide and the next slide answers that a little. This slide talks very much about the positive things. If you are getting the right amount of sleep, which is between nine and 11 hours for you, it means that your body is kept healthy and it can fight against the viruses and germs. It gives you more energy and therefore all of the activities that you need to do in the day, you'll have that energy to do them. 
Getting enough sleep also makes you happier. It helps improve your memory and it helps you concentrate better. Now, if you think about a day in school, these are all really important things. You need energy. We like you to be happy. But if you're working, you've got a memory which is improved because you've slept enough and you're concentrating better. These are all really good things. And these are the things which happen if we do not get enough sleep. Not getting enough sleep can make you irritable and impatient. That means that you might find things really hard to cope with. Small things might seem like big things and you might lose your temper very quickly. Not getting enough sleep also lowers those energy levels. And do you know how busy you are from the minute you walk into school or the minute you wake up and go on to your remote learning? You need energy. So not getting enough sleep lowers those energy levels. Not getting enough sleep can also make it really, really difficult to concentrate. And it makes remembering things really hard and makes it much more difficult. These are really big reasons why we need to make sure that we're all getting enough sleep. So a wee reminder, what happens if we don't get enough sleep? Getting enough sleep though, boosts your immune system to keep healthy, gives you more energy to keep active, makes you happier, improves your memory and helps you concentrate. Not getting enough sleep makes you irritable and impatient, lowers your energy levels, makes it difficult to concentrate and makes remembering things more difficult. So the big question is, are you getting enough sleep? Now, if you are our primary ones to threes, for the last week and a half, you've had an alarm clock and you've been coming into school on time, ready for learning and having a very busy day ahead. If you're primary four to seven, most of you will be still getting up at a very good time and will be working on your remote learning platforms. But it might be though that over this wee period of time that you have been away from schools, you have slept a wee bit later in the morning or you've stayed up a wee bit later at night. So as we are moving to return to school for our primary fours to sevens from Monday the 15th of March, unless the Scottish Government changes that, you now have a week and a half to make sure that you are getting enough sleep for all of those reasons that we have mentioned already. So when mums, dads, granny, grandpas, aunts, uncles and carers ask you to go to bed, there are really important reasons to why you now know that you need to go to sleep at that time. On average, we spend a third of our life asleep. So it must be important. Our brain works nearly as much as when we are asleep as when we are awake. And if you want your brain to work as well as possible, you need a good night's sleep. When you're asleep and unaware of what's going on, your brain forms new memories using the information picked up during the day. If you don't sleep, your ability to remember things can fall by as much as 40%. It also helps when you're snoozing, your brain is hard at work making connections that it doesn't do whilst you're awake. It also sometimes means that you come up with a solution that you didn't think about to a problem during that day. When you're sleeping, it also clears out all of the rubbish. An important function of sleep is to get rid of all the toxins in our brain, which means it will be fresh and raring to go after a good night's sleep. Your brain is processing information and preparing for action all through your sleep. You'll wake up refreshed and everything you were thinking about the day before will be mostly saved in your brain. The brain stores information into long-term memory when you're asleep. And this is very good. So if you're learning a new dance or improving tennis, sleep also helps. It's all good stuff. 
So as we think about getting ready for school in primary one to three or getting ready to come back to school in primary four to seven, make sure that you get a good night's sleep so your brain can work. I'll see you all very, very soon.